This week, I want to share with you an excellent two-player strategy game that plays in about 60 minutes, including setup, and even has some light campaign progression for you and your opponent. My name's Angela, you're watching Hobby Night, and today we're talking about Undaunted Normandy, published by Osprey Games. Undaunted Normandy is a deck building game that places you and your opponent in command of either American or German forces, fighting through a series of missions critical to the outcome of World War II. You use your cards to seize the initiative, bolster your forces, or control your troops on the battlefield, but ultimate victory is determined by the choices you make. Now, I've had this game on my shelf for quite a while, and recently I had the urge to kick the Chaos Cultist ass in something other than 40k. When we pulled it down, we were enthused to see that not only was it easy to learn, but it had a campaign of sorts to guide you through some of the mechanics of the game over time. I immediately fell in love with this game when we pulled it down, not only because the style of the art just really, really appeals to me, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but also just because I was enraptured with the gameplay and just going through the campaign almost immediately. We played through the entire campaign, which happens to be 12 missions, while doing a practice mission just to get a feel for the game within like four or five days, which is unusual for us. Normally we don't sort of hit the same game that many times in one sitting, but this one, we absolutely loved it and just could not stop playing. It happens to be one of my favorite mechanics because I love deck building games, but I also am a big war gamer. So the fact that this actually was a war game and simulated it really well, like there were some intense moments where when a soldier died, oh my God, it was devastating feeling because that final card removing from your deck, which I'll talk a little bit more here in a second about because we'll go over gameplay, just is so heartbreaking and very hard and completely throws your strategy. So there's a lot going on in this game. So let's talk about it a bit more in depth. Well, it's a combination abstract strategy and deck building game. Each mission sees you and your opponent set up in a specific scenario with historically accurate units as well as starting deployments. This awesome briefing book provides all the information you and your opponent will need on just two pages for every mission. Once set up with tokens representing your units deployed on the board, you'll engage in a deck building game where you'll use your cards in a variety of different ways. You might use them to move a friendly unit from one tile to another. Now, this is a little more complicated than it sounds because units can only advance the tiles that have been scouted, which makes scouts very important in your early game, which I learned the hard way because I did not scout once and I couldn't advance my riflemen to actually get good shots on my opponent, which ended up losing me the mission in the end because I just fell behind. It was quite devastating. Or you can use a unit's card to attack an enemy unit. This can be incredibly important when you're trying to get a unit off of an objective that you want to claim during the game, which I had happened to me a number of times, and this is also the only way to get cards out of your opponent's hand, which can mean that you end up messing up what they do in their turn, which I know certainly happened to me a lot, because I cannot tell you, I swear, somehow Chaos Cultists would always know exactly what units I had in my hand, and he'd end up nailing those ones with a 10, which is a critical, so you, you just it automatically hits, and I just constantly had to take active units out of my hand and just put them out of the game because they were gone and it hurt so much. But I also loved every moment of it because I did it to him a few times too. And I was like, see, take that, it hurts, doesn't it? And there are some cards that even allow you to do special actions like the squad leaders, which are very, very important in the early game I found because that's how you recruit new cards into your discard pile to be then able to then use into your deck later. I also like to use them though, and I did this quite a bit, to activate units from their squad to basically be able to move again or attack again or use their own special actions again, which became incredibly pivotal when I was either trying to rush to an objective to try to get to it first because I was going for speed instead of playing the long game and trying to kill off all of Chaos Cultist units, or if I was trying to maybe suppress multiple units to prevent Chaos Cultists from attacking and actually being able to move forward and everything like that. There was a lot of different ways you could use all these cards. Now, this isn't all of the ways, these are just some of the more common actions that you can do with the cards. So I encourage you to read the manual before playing. 
It's that time of the video where I interrupt to tell you about my Patreon and to let you know that we just added a Discord server, which all tiers get access to. So if you're wanting a way to chat with me, share with me your projects, or just tell me what board games you're playing, definitely make sure to check the link below and check out my Patreon. Undaunted not only engaged me with its gameplay, but also its components. And I have to tell you, I am a sucker for a game with beautiful art components. And this one absolutely has it. There are a variety of things in this game that you get to play with, some dice, some tokens, the tiles that you lay your board out to basically represent your battlefield, which are very beautifully illustrated. But the things that I like the most in this game are actually the cards that you get to play with. Each of them has a unique illustration on it. They are diverse and try to, you know, vary the people that are on there, including having different cultures and races represented, which I think is is fantastic, but they're also all named. Now these are all fictional names. They don't actually represent anybody that was in World War II, but I love that they actually took the time to give them some names because it means when you lose them, if I were to lose Heinrich, it would hurt more because Heinrich has a name and I don't want to lose him. His family might be sad about this. And I just love that. Like this game was so charming to, with this art, with the naming convention, and also the color palette that they ended up going with. I am a huge sucker for in theming and they did a really good job with this because the Germans color is themed to their uniform. The Americans color is also themed to their uniform and it works really well. It enhances the readability of the cards. You always know who has the German cards, who has the American cards. You always know what pieces go to which side. They're very legible, clean and crisp, but the watercolor art style just really sells me on this game 100%. I absolutely love watercolor art. They did an excellent job here capturing still a very nice war vibe, which not that war is ever a nice vibe, but they did capture that element really well while still having an absolutely charming style. As I mentioned earlier, Undaunted comes with a campaign, and this campaign has two main purposes. One is to provide a little bit of historical context so that you and your opponent know exactly what these missions were for in World War II. I really love this because they're short, don't really take up a whole lot of time, but give you plenty of information and help lay a little bit more of a narrative out for your campaign and for your actual game and mission that you're playing in. It's fantastic. But the other point of the campaign is to teach you periodically mechanics in the game. It introduces to you new units, it introduces new ways to use those units, and it expands the board as you go, which is fantastic. Now, just to talk a little bit more about the campaign and the strategy that I went into it with, I was aggressive. I was recruiting a lot. I was trying to do as much as possible with all of my units, and I was moving them forward really quickly. And I will say, it worked to my advantage because I actually beat the Chaos Cultists in our campaign. The American forces won, hooray for the allies. But the reason that I got there was because of quite how aggressive I was. Chaos Cultus was a bit slower. He did recruit almost as much as I did, but he was focused on putting a lot of Fog of War into my deck, which is not something we specifically covered in the gameplay portion, but basically you can use your scouts to add Fog of War to the, your opponent's deck, which are useless cards that really don't get used. And so when you have them in your hand, it kind of sucks. I can't tell you how many times I had four Fog of Wars in my hand and it was just awful because I could do literally nothing. And it was just like, and my turn's over, we're done. But the strategy, it really did work. I had a blast trying out a bunch of different things. I did a combination of trying to recruit a lot as well as then switching gears completely and just having all of my squad leaders and platoon sergeants making my units do more things on the board, which sometimes really worked to my advantage, especially when I was trying to clear things off of the board because I was able to get multiple tacks in at once, which allowed me to remove multiple cards from the Chaos Cultist's hand, which eventually took the tokens off the board, which meant that I didn't have to deal with those units anymore and I could secure some of the objectives that I was really needing to get. Because a lot of times what you're doing in the missions is securing objectives and holding places, which makes sense. It's a war game, right? That's what you do in war. But they just, they did it so well. I cannot tell you how much I loved this campaign. And I just really encourage you to try different things because there's lots and lots of different ways to combine these cards and have them synergize together to make them work to your advantage.
Now this isn't a hardcore legacy campaign in the same way that say Gloomhaven or Pandemic is where you're unlocking a lot of different things each round and the game is really changing every time. But this type of tutorialization in board games is excellent and I would love absolutely love to see more games do it because not only does this type of tutorialization make the game easier to learn but also to teach which means that you can get more people playing games with you especially if they're not necessarily into games heavily this is a good introductory war game as well as a deck builder it's relatively simple it plays very quickly you don't spend a whole lot of time on it it's got the charming art like i mentioned earlier and the campaign guides you very easily and paces it really well through this game i absolutely love it and would highly highly recommend it if you like deck builders and if you like strategy games and this has been the first hobby night spotlight on Undaunted Normandy. Now, Undaunted actually has a sequel called Undaunted North Africa, which I plan on picking up because it's got tanks in it, and I really want to use the tank cars because I think it'll be fun. And it has another sequel coming out, which is going to be Undaunted Stalingrad, which I'm very, very hyped for. I'm probably going to end up getting both games because I just, I loved this so much, and I would definitely recommend it to you if you were wanting a deck builder to be able to play with your friend. Now, I have been Angela, you have been watching Hobby Night, and before I head out, I wanted to give a huge thank you to my patrons for allowing content like this to continue to be made. Without you guys, we wouldn't be doing this, so thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed this episode, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!